All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, this is a time lapse. In case you guys missed the uh, Twitch stream, I actually recorded this live on Twitch last night, night before last, and I'll also put up a um, real time version of that there too. So if you missed it and you want to watch it happen live, you can. And of course, I ramble on about things I uh, along the way so I actually chopped this one up a little bit and because uh, I was talking with some of the people that were watching and so that version's going to be a little bit more rambling <laughs> than uh, than this one uh, what was cool though is uh, Geoffrey the artist that drew this actually came into the chat and, and kind of hung out and and talked to everybody so the style on this was was pretty standard for me I, I was using a lasso cut and grad style for most of that and I do have a video on that style on the YouTube channel and there's also a, um, it's a expounded a bit more my coloring course on using that style but uh, the main trick there to get that good fade is to make sure you're sort of using the edge of the brush in the cut so and, and the cut is the area you select with the lasso if you're not familiar with that term um, that's I don't know why it's called that <laughs> don't ask me but um, the, the cut is the area that you select with the lasso and then when you want to get that nice little fade in there uh, you want to use the edge of the brush to do that and that's one question that I get quite a bit uh, from people that are just starting out is they'll they'll set they'll create the cut with the lasso and then use like a really solid brush to fill it in and that's fine that's a, a perfectly acceptable style but it's uh, it's that's more of a it's a it's a flatter kind of cell shaded sort of style to fill it in that way. So, if you want to get that nice little gradient, which is the grad part of the cut and grad, then uh, you're really sort of just using the edge of that round brush in order to to get that in there. And um, the brush I'm using, someone's going to ask, uh, it's it's not it's nothing fancy. Uh, it's my um, I call it my Marta Gracia brush. It's um it's just a big soft brush in hard light mode for the most part um, and I do use a normal mode brush uh, uh, throughout it too, I sort of switch back and forth and then I also use one of Keenan Lafferty's brushes for some of the brushier stuff that looks a little bit more organic um, and I think he has that on his YouTube channel in the description or on his Deviant Art. I can't remember but um, it's a brush I like a lot and I, I talk about this in the live version if you guys decide to watch that one. But this piece started out, and usually with pieces like this, I don't know exactly what I want to do with things like backgrounds and the overall look. And so I'll just start rendering and, and just plan on kind of cleaning it up afterward and, and shifting things and making changes. And, uh, and that's something that took me a long time to learn. Uh, and a lot of beginners probably do the same thing you know the, the piece doesn't have to be perfect at every step in the process you know it's perfectly fine to you know intend on making changes and tweaking things and all sort of things but uh, th things like that but um but yeah this is just uh, pretty much a, a, a big soft round brush in hard light mode that's that's about it um I, i've started using that more for more comic booky superhero sort of coloring because you don't have to switch colors as much in hard light mode than normal so I, I my what I do most of the time is evolving all the time so uh, and people that have been around for a while know that <laughs> so I try to um, I try to adapt and, and not get too stuck in this one single system and um, keeps things fresh so now in areas like that where I want to keep it softer you'll notice I didn't really use the lasso again uh, to create those other little highlights in there that were those more specular highlights just kept the brush soft right in the middle and it gives it more of a softer look and I don't really know what to tell you about this part um, it's pretty standard what I'm doing here it's it's just a uh, you know, one question I get all the time is, well, you know, how do you decide where those cuts go? And, and 
uh, it takes a little practice. I mean, you have to know your anatomy. You've got to understand lighting and form and and all those sort of things to, to be a good colorist. So um, there's no magic trick for it. Um, it's just something that takes time. Um, it, it is something that I plan on covering. I'm I'm in the process of laying out a new course, a more advanced course that's going to uh, get more into the nuts and bolts, especially when it comes to rendering. Because uh, really everything comes down to uh, breaking it into its most basic shapes and figuring out how your light source would, would, would affect that and would impact that. So um, I want to go into a lot more detail on those sort of things and more detail in the color theory. And uh, so I'm hoping, don't hold me to this, but I'm hoping that, <laughs> I'm hoping that course is going to be uh, recorded at some point this year. That's really all I'm, <laughs> all I'm comfortable saying. I, I'm, uh, I've got to slow down on, on other work, uh, on the actual comics work in order to make that happen. So, um, there's no end in sight <laughs> at the moment, except for maybe this summer. So, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this summer I can uh, record that course and, uh, you guys will be able to check that out then. But like I said, don't hold your breath, I'm hoping, because <laughs> it's, it's so far this year is turning out to be pretty busy too, so. And you see me doing a lot of yammering here about something, but, uh, and on the special effects on this, you guys will, will see this happen pretty fast, but uh, for the glows on this, I, I put a black layer on top of everything, on top of the lines and just set it to screen mode and then sometimes I'll use screen to brush on it and sometimes I'll use hard light. Um, I think on this I used hard light mode and you get a more vibrant color that way um, than screen to me. Screen tends to sort of wash things out a little bit at times so so like I said something else that's evolved uh, <laughs> over time so but uh, and again, here I'm kind of shifting the background color around. I was really wasn't happy with that greenish color. And I also changed the color of that gradient in the back to kind of blend all that background into blue and shades of blue so that the orange and red character was really kind of pop against that. And uh, checking the values here, I believe. And oh no, I'm playing around with a uh, uh, adjustment layer. Um, a little bit there. It's a color lookup layer. And I also set up a few what I call big flats uh, uh, layers or just one big uh, what I call big flats and uh, it lets me go in and what I do is just select like all of Lionel at one time and that way I can quickly just grab him and, and do effects to just him or just the background around him or whatever it is and it, it uh, it makes it easier to make kind of big sweeping changes. I don't do that a lot on interiors, but I do on pinups and, and covers quite a bit because those things, there tend to be more edits on those. And dumped a very subtle texture on top of everything. That's the, that's, that's the important thing with textures. Keep it subtle and simple and don't go crazy. If you've watched my channel very much, you've heard me say that a lot. <laughs> and just uh, checking the values here and seeing anything else that I missed. I, I forgot to color the little part of his skin on his face that's a lighter color, so I just selected it all and then lightened it with a levels uh, adjustment, which was worked better than I anticipated it working. <laughs> Happy accident, as Bob Ross likes to say. And like I said, I know I'm going really fast through this. This is for those of you with no attention span, which is <laughs> seems to be some of you. Uh, and some of you guys like the longer ones. And so you'll get both. Uh, if you want to see me talk through all of this in real time, be sure to watch the the full-length version, uh, which will you'll also find on my channel. I hear I was going in and setting up a, a multiply layer just for shadows on... I wanted a little bit more contrast on Lion-O than I had, and I, and I went in a, a bit on Shatara there as well with um, 
You gotta be careful with multiply though. It's, it gets too dark too quick, so you have to kind of watch that. So I think we're getting, yeah, I'm getting pretty close to finishing this up here. So uh, as always, uh, I appreciate everyone for watching uh, and uh, subscribing if you uh, if you want more of this. And uh, oh, I had to add the uh, Thundercats logo there. But uh, don't forget to check the uh, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, check the description for uh, links to my coloring course. And I go into a lot of depth, and there's 10 hours in there. If you guys have watched my channel, you've heard me talk about it before. But uh, 10 hours, 60 videos, I think, roughly. So be sure to check that out. Also on Patreon, if you want to download some of my PSD files, this one's actually going to be on there. And yeah, there's the big, pretty title card at the end to tell you all about it. So, as always, see you guys in the next one. Take care.